If you are a new real estate investor, or honestly, even if you're a seasoned investor, this list is for you. I've got five things to do in 2022. If you are a new real estate investor, some of you can take this cycle back on what you normally do, but this is a good way to get the year started as you go into your investing journey. Things that you need to have in place above and beyond our 2022 goal setting, these things will get you set for success. Five of them, let's do it. Not gonna wait any longer. Number one, find a real estate investment meetup. That can be online for almost two years. We've been doing four different sets of meetings online, weekly and now monthly, even though the meetings are overall weekly. It's a great thing to connect with other investors one-on-one -on -one in real life. But again, obviously there's still things going on. You wanna be safe. So there's plenty of events that occur online, uh, real estate investment groups that meet online and other communities. I would steer a little bit away from Facebook groups. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about meetups that always are in the same time frame. You're gonna see the same people. You're gonna be able to talk about deals. On ours specifically, we go over all the deals that we're doing, uh, neighborhoods in the areas that we're targeting, uh, and then other experiences. And then I'm always around to answer questions. If you ever want information on our meetups, which right now there's four of them, they're tagged as then in the art of real estate investing. First Wednesday of every month is for new investors from anywhere in the country. Second Wednesday of every month is for New Jersey. Third is for Philly and for Pennsylvania properties. And the fourth Wednesday of every month is for VIP investors, five deals or five doors. Uh, everyone can be on though. You'd just be in the chat and off camera if you don't have five deals and five doors. That's number one, find a real estate investing meetup. It's how you make connections. The best thing that you can do in real estate investing world is to actually build relationships. It's your number one source of deals and options and learning and mentorship. And if you're new, that is all of what you're looking for. Just take a quick side note. My name is Jonathan Green. I run an off-market acquisition company called Streamline Properties. I also have a big on-market team of investor-friendly agents, which we will get to soon, called Streamline Properties On Market. We're brokered by eXp Realty. Let's get to number two. Uh, surprisingly right here, connect with an investor-friendly real estate agent. And it doesn't have to be us, but what you wanna do is you wanna be vetting real estate agents in your target area to make sure that they have investor experience. 99% of real estate agents do not have experience working with investors, and they won't be able to do the data analysis and things that you need in terms of vetting renters, understanding potential rent rule, where you can do value adds, what the consequences of potentially doing an addition, can you even do an addition? You wanna work with an agent who's experienced, has investments of their own and works with other investors so that they understand exactly what you're looking for. If you're a new house hacker, how can you work with an agent who doesn't even know what house hacking is? Seems pretty obvious. You do not have to pick any agent. You can go through the steps, find out who works with investors, in anywhere in the country, if you need an investor friendly agent, you can always contact us and we will set you up with one. We have reach everywhere and we do vet all the areas to make sure we can find people who do what we do. Uh, and we also have, uh, obviously we have agents in five states right now who work with investors in all of those markets. Those two are really important to get you started. The real estate meetup for connection, the investor friendly agent to make sure that you're working with someone who likes to work with investors so that when we get to these other three, these things will make more sense, at least one of them for sure. Number three, lock in your financing vehicle, whatever it is. If you're a cash buyer, you wanna make sure that you have your proof of funds on hand every month. You're gonna print that out as you get a new statement, just so you have it available quickly for deals. If you're doing a conventional mortgage, you wanna have that pre-approval and know when the pre-approval expires. You wanna stick with that same lender, make sure they understand what you're doing, that you know what type of loan you're using. Are you doing conventional, are you doing FHA? If you're a house hack, are you doing a 203K loan? Uh, and if you're doing a 203K, are you doing big one? Are you doing streamline? Which one are you gonna do? You wanna understand exactly what you're going into financing wise so that when you're presenting your offers, you exactly know how to handle it. If you're using hard money for flips, you wanna have that locked in, know your percentage and know the points that you're paying on your deal in most areas. Usually will depend on how many deals you're done. And if you're using private money of some sort, you wanna secure those deals. 
even if you're using private money from a family member or friend, you want to be very clear and upfront with the terms and what the expectations, especially if there's some quasi partnership, so that everybody is on the same page. That's three. Number four, finalize your investment choice. Now, it doesn't mean that it can't change over time, but you really want to be clear on what you're targeting. Because if you're not sure if you're going to flip, burr, get an Airbnb, or do a house hack, you're going to be wasting a lot of your own time and the agent's time. And it's going to be very hard to keep an agent if you keep dipping your toes in different. So you should be reading books, listening to podcasts, talking to these other investors at number one at your real estate investor meetup, and finalizing what you think your first vehicle uh, for investment is. You can always change your mind, but you have to go in with that mindset of, I'm looking for a flip because then the agent and you are looking for that type of property. If you're looking for all of them, it's very hard for an agent to do the work of, hey, I'm looking for any type of investment that works. I mean, that's just too vague. We really wanna know exactly what you're looking for so we can find it, but it's incumbent on you figuring out exactly what your investment niche is. You can always go through 10, 15 showings and say, you know what, I don't think flipping is really the thing for me. I much rather do a burr. It seems like it's gonna work for me then you adjust to that, but one at a time. We can't be looking for them all. And number five, this is the one that I think is catching a lot of people in the analysis paralysis uh, section. See one property a week. This is also exactly why you need number two, an investor-friendly agent. An investor-friendly agent who looks at investment properties doesn't care about showing you one property a week. It's fun. They're looking for investments. They have other investor clients. It doesn't mean you're gonna lose your deals. If you're the first person looking, you're going to get that deal if you want it. You just have to work with someone who doesn't mind looking at dumpy properties that need fix up and who has some experience in telling you what these repair costs potentially are. You're not getting a bunch of contractors out to do stuff in a competitive market. So you need to understand the numbers yourself. And the only way that your data crunching and computer spreadsheet uh, you know, slideable scales of what you think your investment looks like. None of it makes any sense until you actually go out and start seeing properties. I would hope you'll see more than one a week and see as many as you can before you write your first offer. But until you start seeing properties, you're not getting anywhere as an investor because it's all kind of video game, looking at numbers, it seems real. You don't know what 250,000 looks like in your market until you see it. And then you don't know what 300,000 looks like and the difference between the two until you see it. You don't know the difference between a property that needs 100,000 versus one that needs 50,000, what they look like, smell like, feel like, and if you like that at all. Those are my top five tips. I'm gonna hit you one last time with them. Number one, find a real estate investment meetup that can be in person or online. Two, connect with an investor-friendly real estate agent. Of course, us at Streamline Properties on Market, brokered by eXp Realty. We're in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Houston, Texas, and out in Elko, Nevada. So we can also source agents in other areas for you. But just do the vetting yourself to make sure that they work with investors. It will help you so much more than just working with a regular agent. Number three, lock in your financing vehicle, whatever that may be, even if it's cash. Four, finalize your choice on what you believe you want to invest in so that you're streamlined and knowing what we're looking for. You can always change, but you want to be have one focus on that. And then number five, see one property a week. If you start January 2022 like that, you're going to be off to a great start. Good luck. I hope these help.